friends welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video today we have another decoupage for beginners video so today i'm going to be talking about the differences between one and two step crackles so they are two different things so the way in which they work is completely different so i just wanted to kind of talk you through the main differences and the things that you can do with them also show you some examples of a one step crackle medium and two step crackle medium so that if you've never worked with crackle mediums before and you don't really know what they are then hopefully after you've watched this video um, you will have an understanding of what the differences are and you will know which one you need to go out and buy So I'm going to start with one step crackle medium. So here I have one step crackle medium. There are many different brands that do this kind of medium. So this particular one that I have is Little Birdie one step crackle medium. So for the most part, most art supply brands and also most decorative brands that sell paint and things like that will have some kind of version of one step crackle medium and most of those brands will also have some kind of version of two step crackle medium but we'll talk about those later you can also achieve one step crackle medium by using pva glue and i have not intentionally used pva glue to achieve crackle effect However, as I work with molds a lot and I use wood PVA glue to glue my molds down, a lot of the times when, they, when the glue seeps out a little bit out of the mold and then I go paint over it, I notice that the paint cracks over it. So I have not done it intentionally, but I have many um, accidental one-step crackles using PVA glue as well. So as you can see, one-step crackle medium will give you the chipped paint look so basically it is an artificial way of achieving the effect of um of something that has been painted and then painted over with a different paint and then with with time that top layer of paint starting is starting to chip and crack and you can see bits of this other paint showing through so this is the artificial way of achieving that aged look so the way in which it works is that you have to apply your first color of paint just like you would if you was naturally you know painting a table um, so at one point it was blue in which case at one point this back the back of this plaque was burgundy color which you can't really see as burgundy here it just shows more like black but um, but it is kind of this dark dark red underneath there so you apply your paint then you let it dry and then you apply a layer of one step crackle medium next once your medium is dry so i would personally suggest leaving it for a few hours just to make sure that it is definitely all completely dry or overnight that will work as well and then once it's fully dry you apply your other color of paint and this will normally be a contrasting color so so if the first paint that you applied is a darker color so a dark blue dark red I don't know dark green black anything so the second color that you want to apply is going to be something that is nice and light or just a bright shade something like that so that you can see those cracks appearing but of course if you want a subtle cracked look then there's nothing wrong with going kind of similar shades and you'll still be able to see a little bit of cracked effect it really depends on your taste and preference but if you wanted to see kind of the full effect and see it really contrasting then you need to use contrasting colors so most of the time people will only use one step crackle medium on painted surfaces uh, so for example i would not be able to do one step crackle on this side because in order to achieve a cracked look using one step crackle medium you need to paint you need to use two different shades of paint otherwise it just doesn't work so you can't apply one step crackle medium over decoupage and then get cracks like you would on this for example however there are ways around it and if you have seen my last video if not then go ahead and watch it um, i literally uploaded a tutorial on how i did this coaster um, last thursday and so this um, so this is a way that you would potentially be able to combine one step crackle medium and 
um, transfers. So if I was to decoupage over this, so a decoupage paper will com cover it completely and you won't be able to see any um, any cracks. It could potentially work if you was to apply like a full napkin, if, if there's a lot of white, for example, on the napkin, um, when you apply it, you might be able to see little bits, uh, see a little bit kind of peeking through, but, um, but the best kind of result that you would be able to get is you need to put the picture over the top and it needs to be kind of a see-through effect. So if you was to transfer a picture over this, so I could transfer this picture onto here and then I would still be able to see the cracks and I would still be able to see the, um, the picture. So that's kind of the way to combine the two. However, traditionally people only use one step crackle medium on specifically on the on the parts where there is just paint not decoupage um, you could potentially do sections so do like a circle here where it's decoupaged and then go around with paint and kind of you know have the cracked effect and decoupage but it can't go over decoupage so it has to be the crackle and then decoupage over top or transfer over the top rather. So I hope that that makes sense. So moving on to this little thing. So I actually filmed the process of getting this cracked effect on this coaster. So this is what you're gonna see here. So I painted the coaster gold. When the paint was dry, I applied a coat of one step crackle medium and let it dry. And then once that was dry, I then took this blue paint and using a brush, I applied it onto the coaster. So as you can see, it kind of starts cracking immediately. I did end up leaving it for a little bit just to allow it some time to, uh, for all of the cracks to appear. But this is the result that I ended up with. And so as you can see, you can see the gold. The gold is what shows through. So once you've applied your crackle medium and your second coat of paint, it's gonna start cracking, revealing the color that is underneath. Sometimes if you do one step crackle medium, and you've applied your crackle medium and then you've applied your second uh, second color of paint over the top and you're noticing that there's no cracks appearing whatsoever or there's like very little crackling it could be that the paint is too um, kind of acrylic too stretchy so if you've worked with uh, chalk paints and acrylic paints you've probably already noticed this that acrylic paints are much more kind of stretchy in a way i don't really know how else to <laughs> explain it but they are more, much more flowy and it's much easier to get like an even um, no brush strokes application using acrylic paint and that is because they do have this like plasticky kind of element stretchy element to them and so um, so what could potentially happen is that you apply your acrylic paint over the top and then the crackle medium is trying to kind of stretch it out so that it cracks and instead of cracking it just kind of stretches out and um, so you don't end up with um, cracks. So it's best to use kind of thicker chalkier paints. It's much better if you can get the second layer so this um, contrasting color applied all in one go. So the, the more brush strokes you end up having to do, the less of a cracked effect you're going to get and it won't work as well. So it could be a little bit of a learning curve there and you might need to experiment with the paints that you have around, the effects that you want to achieve and so on. But it's just like with most things, um, you, you have to allow yourself some time to actually learn to use these, to use these tools. Right, so now moving on to two-step crackle varnish. And so I have two here. So I have fine line crackle varnish and I have um, polyvine crackelure. So both of these are two-step crackle varnishes or two component crackle varnishes. Excuse this bottle here. When I bought it, the, um, the, the little jar, um, was a little bit damaged so there was a liquid coming through so i just kind of had to tape it up but this is base coat and this is top coat so just as the name suggests two-step crackle varnish is called that because it has two steps to it so it has two components component one which is your base and you apply it first and then your component two which is your second coat or top coat and this is 
the part that is gonna crack. So let me just show you some examples. When I was looking to find some examples um, of crackles for this video, I actually realized that I don't really have that many um, lying around in, at home anymore. So these are examples of fine line crackle varnish. And this here is an example of um, polyvine crackalure and same with and it's also here on my little brush holder jar so this is also polyvines crackalure i hope that i'm pronouncing it right if i'm not i'm really really sorry there will be many different types of uh, crackle varnishes out there on the market same goes with the one step crackle medium as well so there will be many different ones the best thing that i can advise is that if you are buying it in a shop then if you're not sure which one is which or what um, what they do find find the shop assistant and speak to them and i'm sure they will be able to kind of point you in the right direction and explain the differences to you and if you're buying these things online read the description if you're not sure then um, google the name of the crackle that you're looking at and see what kind of videos you can come across of people talking about them if you can actually look on the on the company's website where they actually talk about it so um, to do your research before you buy something if you're new to this do your research uh, but what you can see here so it gives you more of a uh, cracked or chipped pottery look so i don't know if that makes sense hopefully it does the main difference with two-step crackle varnish compared to one step crackle medium is that you can apply this over painted surfaces as well as you can apply it over decoupage um, transfers whatever you want to so you can apply this over a picture so if one step crackle varnish actually cracks the paint the main difference here is that two step crackle varnish um, forms like a top coat over your decoupage or over the paint and then that is what cracks and you have to fill the cracks with um, pigment or paint or or something to show them to evidence them and then you seal it so it goes over the top so again I really hope that this makes sense but of course if you still have any questions after this make sure to leave them in the comments so in this little clip I will show you how I achieved this look um, on this coaster so as you can see I decoupaged this coaster using this sheet music page and then once I was happy with all of the like edges that I did and everything, then I apply my crackle medium. So it is completely up to you whether you apply your two-step crackle medium kind of um, in the middle in between getting all of the edges sorted or you do it as like the last step. But so what I did with this is, so I decoupaged it, I, um, I dabbed the edges around to get them all nice and faded. And then I applied my base coat of crackalure so this is polyvine so i apply base coat and then i let it dry so as you can see when you apply it it's kind of this milky color and then as it dries it becomes transparent once it's completely transparent that's when you know that it's dry and so you can go ahead and apply component two or top coat and so you want to be careful in between applying base coat and top coat you want to be careful because uh, base coat once it's dry it will be dry and it become transparent however it's still gonna be sticky because it needs to be sticky so that you can then show off the cracks so it's gonna stay sticky so you want to be careful that you don't like you know put your fingers or drop it and get like cat hairs all over it or something like that so be careful and you will notice that as your top coat starts to dry that's when you're gonna see the cracks appear. And then as the top coat starts to dry, the cracks will start appearing. And so as the cracks appear, what happens is that the top coat kind of cracks essentially in the same way as uh, the paint cracks on this. So it cracks, making kind of an opening for the base coat to show through. And as we already know, the base coat 
is sticky and so the sticky layer kind of appears through these cracks so um, you will be able to see them but they're going to be very transparent because there's no pigment inside so next what you want to do is you want to evidence your cracks and so to evidence your cracks you can use um, any kind of dry pigment so there are different types specifically made for two-step crackles um, called Porina or Poporina. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'll make sure to put some screenshots in here uh, so you can see um, metallic pigments. Uh, most of these things you can buy from um, art and craft shops or art shops. Um, mica powder, things like that can be used for evidence and cracks. You can also use different decor waxes. However, I personally, um, I have not had a good experience with using decor waxes. I find that they just kind of stick to the non-cracked bits and then I can't get it off. Um, and so it just looks messy, but um, allegedly, according to um, wax manufacturers, they can be used to evidence cracks. You can also use things like soft pastels, so you know the pastels that you use for drawing. Um, not oil pastels, but soft pastels, so the chalky ones. And you can just take a, um, a scalpel knife or some scissors, grind a little bit into a powder and then using a brush you just kind of pick it up and then brush it into all of the cracks and so again because the cracks are sticky the pigment will stick into the cracks so the two-step crackle mediums can be a little bit um, more tricky in terms of that some of them are solvent based some of them are water based again you will need to check that before you buy it and so with solvent based crackles for example you will need to experiment and check and see what kind of pigments you are actually able to use so for example this pentart fine line crackle varnish it is solvent based so whenever i use it i have to be careful with what i use to show the cracks off because when you go to varnish it and you have to varnish it with a solvent based varnish if you're using um, a water soluble pigment in there i find that it just kind of dissolves and so as soon as you varnish it um, all of the cracks kind of become transparent again so you might need to be a little bit careful with what you use to show the cracks off and also on that note so depending on whether your crackle varnish is solvent based or water based you will need to also make sure that you use the correct type of varnish to seal it with. I would definitely recommend that you seal it. So with this varnish, for example, if it's not sealed and I went like this with my fingers, it would all start coming away. And if it's not coming away, then I could, my fingerprints are gonna stay there and so on. So I would definitely recommend sealing it. If it is a solvent-based crackle varnish, you will need to use a solvent-based uh, varnish to also seal it. If it's a water-based one, then you can use either. And once again, just like with one-step crackle varnish, there are many different brands that do two-step crackle varnish. And again, you will need to kind of do your research when you go to buy something in terms of um, what kind of crackle varnish it is, um, whether it's fine line, um, whether it's just normal kind of crackle lure. Usually they will show you kind of some some kind of example online so you can see what kind of effect you're going to get or the, there's going to be videos out there or if you're completely not sure then I am always more than happy to help you if you're not sure about what kind of what kind of brand it is or, or anything like that then feel free to drop me a message and I'll do my best to kind of find out for you and see if I can help with any more information but um, in general, Google and YouTube are my top sources to go when I'm not sure about what that brand is, what happens, what it does, and so on, and how to seal it, and so on. So I hope that I was able to clear up some of the um, some of the questions, some of the confusion that I know happens sometimes when you're a beginner with regards to crackle varnishes and what they do and how to use them. Um, hopefully it all made sense but like I said if you still have any kind of questions if I forgot to mention something and you still want to ask that question please go ahead and leave it in the comments down below or just drop me a message on Instagram or my Facebook links are going to be in the description and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can if you have any future video suggestions for where you would like me to just kind of explain things a little bit more 
um, in this kind of real time setting, then also go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I am always looking for ideas for more things to um, to talk to you guys about. Like I said, links for everything are going to be in the description. I will also try and find links for the crackle varnishes that I use. And yeah, subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!